Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Ms. Roxana. I'm, I'm the elementary school counselor from early childhood to second grade. And today in the parenting tips, we are going to talk about self-esteem, your child self-esteem. So first of all, I would like to define what is self-esteem and it is an individual's subjective evaluation of their own worth. So it encompasses beliefs about oneself, such as I'm worthy, I am loved, I am intelligent, or I am caring, and emotional states, such as pride, triumph, despair, frustration. And it is related to three to two main concepts. The first one is self-concept. So first of all, we think about ourselves or you think about yourself um, with different ideas or descriptions. And it answers the question, who I am. Then we have self-esteem, which is a positive or negative self-assessment about this self-concept. And it basically answers the question, how I feel about myself. And the third one would be self-confidence. And it is the trust in myself and my own abilities. And this helps me to take new challenges and learn from mistakes. How does self-esteem develop? Talking about children, how does it develop in time? Well, first, when children are born, when the baby's born, um, both their psychological and emotional needs are taken care of. So they feel loved by someone, their mom, their caregiver, because someone at home is taking care of their physiological needs. For example, the baby cries and someone comes and feeds him or her. Um, also, they are in a safe place where they can um, take a bath or sleep, and there's always someone taking care of them. Then, as they start growing, they start to differentiate between what is myself and what is not. So one huge example to, to see this is um, this time when they're about eight months old and a year, when they, um, when they know that the image in the mirror is themselves. Most of the animals, every animal, um, when facing a mirror is not aware that this is an image and you can tell, I don't know, a cat, a dog, when they look in the mirror, they see like another cat or another dog, but we as humans can recognize that the reflection of the mirror is ourselves, okay? And this is, this is how they start understanding, okay, this is myself and this is my mom, this is my dad. It also, uh, of course, is not only an image, it also includes the concepts that parents um, like tell him or her about their own personality and it starts even before they are born because parents dream about this baby even before and they have an idea of how, how the baby is going to be and as they grow older they reflect that to them oh you are so smart you are doing this very well i love how you said your first words and we are constantly reflecting things on them and like day after day, these things that we reflect to our children through our words and actions start to become part of their own personality and they start to identify with what they perceive as a reflection of other people's opinions and actions towards them. Okay, so now I would like to do a little uh, reflection with you and I am going to play some music. Let me see. Okay. Now, think about your child. Okay, you can close your eyes. And you may take a deep breath in and think about your child. Okay, what do you think he or she thinks about himself or herself. How do you think he or she describes himself or herself, their self-concept?
Now, how do you think he or she feels about himself or herself? Does he or she have a positive or negative feeling towards himself or herself? Are they happy with what they think they are? Is he or she confident about his or her own abilities? Does he or she is willing to take on new challenges? Okay. Now you may open your eyes. So this is not for sharing. We're not going to share anything during this meeting, but I really want you to think about these questions in your child because this, this is really important. The concepts they have about themselves has a huge influence on how they feel about themselves and how capable they think they are of doing things. Doing things like schoolwork or doing things such as making new friends or playing a game or anything that it's appropriate to their age. Okay, so now we are going to the, to the things that usually boost self-esteem. And here I listed like five things that are aspects that are really important. Uh, and I'm gonna go over each one of them with some tips. So they are knowing that they're loved, having a sense of belonging to a family or community, spending quality time with their loved ones, being encouraged to try new things, and being praised for what is important to them. So the first one is knowing that they are loved. When a child knows that they are loved by his mom or her mom, dad, and people around them, uh, this um, boosts their self-esteem and the love that they have for themselves. So here I wanna share quickly a shard about the five languages of love. I don't know if you've heard the concept, but maybe we can talk about that. Uh, in another session, but basically there are five ways in which we express our love and in which we feel loved by others. The first one is words of affirmation, such as uh, encouragement, affirmations, appreciations, empathy, um, compliments, listen actively. Then you have physical touch, hugs, anything that isn't verbal that lets you know that you are loved. Hugs, kisses, or holding hands, receiving gifts, like gestures that show um, that you care with a, with a little gift or something that is significant. We ha also have quality time, um, usually one-on-one -on -one time, but it can also be like, fam like quality time as a family, and acts of service like use action phrases like I'll help you. They want to know you're, you are there when they need help. So I want you to think right now, how do you express your love considering these five languages of love? How do you express your love? And how does your child feels love? Because sometimes they might be different. Some actions that you might take, some tips are, if the language of love preferred by both of you or your child is words of affirmation, you can say, I love you. You can write notes saying you are proud of them. You can praise them in front of others and be specific about the praise. We're going to talk about praising later on. If it's physical touch, it can be holding hands, giving hugs, uh, reading stories together and give family group hugs. If it's receiving gifts, you can give thoughtful gifts and gestures, not buying like expensive things, but things that are meaningful. Small things matter in a big way. And also express your gratitude when receiving gifts. For example, if your child gives you a drawing or something, I don't know, a little plan they took from the garden, showing your gratitude is amazing for them. Also having quality time, create special moments together, make eye contact, pay attention to details, um, when you're having this quality time, avoid using technology and also eat together as a family is another example. And the last one, acts of service, do chores together, work on projects together and pick them up, like do things that are um, selfless for them. 
The second aspect is building a sense of belonging. Like we all need to feel that we belong to a specific group, first of all, to our families and then to our school, to our classroom, to our community, to our country, the world. So, but when they are, um, when they're growing up, the most important thing is have a sense of belonging in their own family. So some tips are um, telling family stories family stories about before they were born or when they were younger, like ba during the, their babyhood, or even like more recent stories. Also uh, involve them by giving them some responsibilities at home and home chores. In that way, they feel that they're part of that household and that they also contribute. And of course, you need to consider um, chores that are age appropriate. Family agreements. Of course, in every family, there is rules. Last week, uh, some parents asked about the difference between rules and agreements. And basically, agreements are um, like statements and possible rules that were discussed before. So if there's anything that in your family's possibility that you can consider your child's opinion, please do so because then it gives them like this sense of belonging uh, within the family group. And be a role model. Always um, model whatever behavior you want your child to develop because they, more than listening to your words, they look at what you're doing. The third area is spending quality time. We talk about that in the languages of love and I'm gonna give you two ideas. The first one is develop family rituals. Some examples are story at bedtime, like every night we're gonna read a story together or a spe special goodbye kiss or um, any other special form of con contact, let's say, to express your feelings. Um, another idea is family game night every weekend or ways of doing things that are special for them. And the other one, plan some regular one-on-one -on -one time. And the most important word here is to plan because sometimes we, get into the rush of work and daily activities and we forget how important it is to spend one-on-one -on -one time with our family members. Um, it is also very important that you choose an activity that they enjoy. So it can be let's do puzzles together or let's play soccer, baking cakes or cooking or watching a movie. During this one-on-one -on -one time, it's important that you do an activity and also um, find the opportunity to talk about your child's feelings and also express your own. This is super important. Encourage to try new things. And this is related also to self-confidence. How confident my child believes they, um, they are of doing and accomplishing things. So first, help your child learn new things and achieve goals. Of course, age appropriate. If, it's, if the goals are too difficult to achieve, they might quit, but you can um, break them into steps. And this applies for school and for anything, you know, um, from learning how to walk and talk to doing math assignments. Also be there, but let them try on their own. So it's really important that they know and they feel your support, but also that you give them the opportunity to try on their own. Instead of uh, feeding them all the time, I mean, it's I'm talking about children, first, second grade, kinder, even, even EC4, um, they can do it on their own and you can be there, or I don't know, your child is learning how to brush their teeth. They can do it on their own and then maybe you supervise if it, if it's, if it was well done or they need some other um, help. This applies, okay, consider failures as learning experiences. And this applies also for school because sometimes we as parents want to, you know, help our children and now that we are uh, with virtual school. But the important thing is that they consider failures as learning opportunities and experiences by their making fa errors or their failures, we know where we need to put some more effort in order to grow or learn something new. And teach your child to treat himself or herself kindly, especially when they make a mistake. Um, 
we don't want them to be frustrated about mistakes and so that they can quit on their activities and goals, but always let them know that mistakes are part of life and that it's okay to make mistakes as long as we learn from that experience. And the last one is about praise, being praised for what is important. So first of all, don't overpraise. For example, if your child is in a soccer match and they didn't score any goal, they were running the other way around, uh, weren't really participating in the team, it will be a little fake if you start saying like, oh my God, you're the best soccer playing. They, they know um, this is because you love them, but it might be confusing for their self-concept. So it is better um, to don't overpraise and make them feel that it is earned. And praise um, the effort, avoid focusing on results or fixed qualities. Results like, I don't know, the results of a game or of a score in, an, in a test or fixed qualities such as you are so smart, you are so pretty, uh, you are so strong. Those are good, but it's, uh, it's better to praise their effort and focus on specific behaviors that they're doing so that it's clear for them what they did well and what they need to improve. Okay, and I wanna finish with this quote from Dr. Seuss uh, that I really love and it's, and it's very powerful for children too. Today you are you, that is truer than true. There is no one alive who is youer than you. So it is very important that we um, transmit this sense of love and belonging to our children and also how important it is for them to be authentic and um, the way that they are loved the way they are. So in the website, in the counselor's website, we included two articles about your child's self-esteem. And I love this because there's one, it's the same website, um, the resource that we took from, and one is um, for parents and the other, ones, the other one is for kids. So you can see the title there. So thank you very much. And now we can have some questions. Let me see. You can use a chat or you can unmute yourselves. I'm gonna stop sharing. If you have some questions about self-esteem or about the tips that I, that I gave and also, or a comment about something that you can relate with um, within your own family. Yes, me, I wanna know um, how to help a kid to improve their self-esteem. Like, cause I feel one of my kids doesn't have much self-esteem and sometimes he misbehaves because of that. And I wish he can know all the things you taught us today so that he can try new things and know that he's capable, but I just don't know how to transmit that to him. Okay, so, but you notice that, thank you. First of all, thank you uh, for, for this, for your question. Um, first of all, you notice this um, when he's doing like, I would, I would first ask myself when, where and when your child shows this um, low self-esteem or lack of self-esteem, let's say, is it when relating to others or is it doing, well, doing, um, I don't know, school assignments? Relating to others, I would say. Okay. Like he feels insecure. Okay, I would start with building or strengthening the relationship between the parent and the child by spending quality time with the child and one-on-one -on -one time with the child and figure out a little bit what is it that um, that your child is feeling. Sometimes we make a mistake and we, we compare our children's ability with someone, with another child, with a sister or a sibling, and we, we, don't, uh, we don't notice at the moment, but then they, they like introduce that in their own personality and start comparing themselves. So I would just start with building up the relationship between you and him or her 
And like following the, the tips that I gave, the first step I would recommend would be strengthening the relationship between you and him or her. And from that point, like start having one-on-one having -on -one time, having quality time one-on-one, -on -one, and then started, uh, starting like to praise the effort and not the results. Um, let me see, I see some comments there. And whenever you notice that your child is feeling insecure, find the time to talk to him or her about the situation, okay? And let them know, focus on their strength. Let them know like, okay, maybe in this situation, this is not your strength and it's okay, we're not perfect in everything. Okay, let's figure out what is your strength and focus on his or her strength. So I would, I think that would be like a good start point um, for your child. Thank you. I don't know if Ms. Batista wants to add something or Ms. 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 Manzanares is also here. You need to unmute yourself. Yes, good afternoon. I would just like to add to what you, you said, Ms. Roxana, that um, sometimes because as parents, we, we like to help our children. Um, sometimes we transmit the wrong message, especially when we do things for them all the time we have to be careful because the message we're transmitting is you can't do this on your own and you need me to do it for you and sometimes this um, little things like these send kids the wrong message so whatever they can do on their own let them do it on their own because as you build that independence their self-esteem will also rise okay nice Totally. Thank you, Ms. Manzanares. There's a, there is a comment here. My daughter is five years old and she is shy. Sometimes I think that could be a problem. Other times I think that can be only another way to be herself. How do you see? Okay, there's a, I mean, there's a thin line between someone that is uh, introvert because they enjoy being on their own and they, they enjoy doing things on their own, being by themselves, and someone being shy because they are scared of other people judging them. So I would say it's really important to determine that since the beginning, like what is, where does her shyness come from? Because she like uh, deeply enjoys being on her own because that's another possibility. And in our society today, being an extrovert is so, praise and, and that sometimes introverts, they can also put really important things on, like on the table and they, and we don't, we don't consider or we don't appreciate them too much. So I would first reflect on where does my child shyness come from? Is it that she enjoys her alone time or is it because she's scared of her friends' judgments or I don't know, reactions? And then from there, decide like an action plan. It's, it's always, it. and I would also wonder like if your child has some friends or is she totally alone because of her shyness? If she, we don't want every child to have like so many friends, but at least if they have one or a couple friends that they really bond to. And if the case is that she has some friends, I wouldn't be too concerned. If the case is that she uh, enjoys being on her own and doing things on her own, I wouldn't be too concerned. If, the, if it's the other case though, that she is shy because she is um, scared of other people's reactions or opinions, I would be concerned. And uh, again, if you follow these tips that I gave today, um, you will see that your child will, will start being more confident and in, in every, aspects and environments of their life. So, and also I would ask, has something happened in the past? Has someone like made fun of her or has she been rejected? I don't know if you want to, if you want to share or I think about. Yeah, Mirax, and I want to add something to that. And I think that regarding that last point you said that if there's been changes, like because if she was not shy before and then now she out of a sudden start to be more, more shy it's like something to think about like 
there's there's something that's changed, right? But sometimes it's also, you know, the personality of, of, of the child. It's the, it's the way they are, like, and sometimes we I heard many, many parents saying, well, but I would like him or her to, to participate more or to be more extrovert. And, and, and I, 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 sometimes I think that is like kind of imposing like our own personality because we want our children to, to resemble more to us, right? But, but we have to consider if that's, if that's the way they are, if, if, if Okay, I'm not like that, but maybe my my partner it's more it's 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 shy or it's introverted. Like you know, sometimes it's personality, sometimes it's a model behavior, sometimes uh, there are situations that that happen and, and make children to start behaving in a different way. I will I love the the questions you uh, ask. Uh, the parents to reflect on because that, that helps also understand what how's their, the self-esteem like it's been more toward you know a positive self-esteem or it's more toward like a negative self-esteem and these are really nice questions to think about to reflect because these are good indicators to pay attention to if there is really a struggle with self-esteem and act as soon as as possible and not wait until you know they're teenagers and all you know the developmental uh, challenges comes and, and join and create a, a more complex scenario for them in terms of you know a personality and confidence yeah, yeah totally and it also invites um us to be more mindful about the, our behavior and relationship with our children because sometimes, I don't know, in, even in families with a single child, comparisons are made like, oh, your cousin, she's, she's so bright or she, she goes really well in school and then what happens with you? And we do it like, uh, we don't really mean to her child, of course, but it gets really deep within and we don't even notice how this affects their, their self-esteem. So things to, and also when we praise like these fixed traits or, you know, you are so smart, you are so pretty, you are so beautiful. This is very confusing for them. And, and mostly because being beautiful is not something that they really chose. It's like the way you were born. And it's not something that they can control or that they can manage or that they can regulate. So it's better to praise behavior, specific behaviors that they do and praise their effort. So, and not, not do everything for them because, because this sends the wrong message. This tells them like, you are not capable of doing this. This, yeah, maybe we're in a rush, like, oh, we need to go somewhere or we need to do something. And sometimes we need to do things for our children. That's true. But it's very important to be mindful about, um, how often we give them the opportunity to do things on their own and start building that, that self-confidence that they are capable of learning, of doing things, of making decisions, of speaking their opinions. So it's really important. Who else? There's a, thank you so much. Your tips are always of great help. Also the videos for the kids. <laughs> thank you. Okay, do you have any other question? Usually kids and people are like very concerned about what others are thinking about them. And you can tell them like, well, you are thinking that everyone is thinking about you. And that person might be thinking the same. So at the end, no one's thinking about anybody because we are focused on, oursel on ourselves and thinking about others' opinions. That is one thing you can reinforce. And the other one is that opinions change. What the main trait of opinions is that they change. And you can ask them, like, think about someone uh, when you first met that person, like a friend at school. What do you think, what do you thought about that friend when you first met him or her? Okay, what do you think about him or her now? Is it the same? And the answer for sure will be no. And then you can, you can start talking like, about opinions and how they change. So if someone, if you do something and someone else don't like it, it can always change for better. So 
that's another thing you can talk to your children about because we are we are always um, reinforcing like oh people who speak out or people who are you know social butterflies and that takes away our child's like essence and we don't want that to happen and to add up to that it's like you know the, that external dialogue that they are listening to that you know that maybe criticism or pointing out you know difficulties rather than strength or something eventually they, that will become their internal dialogue mm -hmm. and that that will be the the dialogue that they will have within themselves with themselves you know like how am i talk to myself if this is what I've been listening when my parents are saying or criticizing me all the time, I'm going to start criticizing myself eventually. So that external dialogue eventually becomes the internal one. So we have to be careful to the way we are talking to them. Totally. And of course, I just wanted to add one more thing. We know as parents that we we teach much more with our example and through modeling than a million of words can say. So remember that we are setting an example with whatever behavior we adopt as parents too. Totally. Yeah, we talk about that, being a role model for our children. Super important. Do you have any more questions or comments? Okay. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. We really enjoy spending this time with you every week. So we'll see each other in two weeks for next week is for upper elementary, unless you have other kids in third, fourth or fifth grade. <laughs> so thank you very much for joining. We're gonna put this video on the, on the Mets YouTube channel and please check the website, the counselor's website for the links that I shared with you. Thank you. Okay, bye, see you next week.